Sure, so my name is Joe Dustin. I'm a principal of mobile health here at Metadata Solutions. Uh, we're a cloud-based technology company that services the life sciences industry. In essence, uh, all of our clients run their clinical trials on our platform. So some of the solutions we provide are uh, software solutions to run your clinical trials online, anywhere from uh, planning your study, protocol design, budgeting and negotiation with your sites, uh, to the things that we're probably most well known for, which is study conduct. This is running your study, it's EDC, it's randomization, trial supply, medical coding, safety, electronic patient reported outcomes, uh, all coupled around analytics and reporting uh, to really sort of get a hold on how your clinical trials are progressing and hopefully to conduct them faster, safer, cheaper, uh, all of those things. Looking for effectiveness as well as efficiency. What sets us apart is more of a, an end-to-end -end sort of solution where we we're, have organically grown a lot of these capabilities uh, to be put into a modern architecture. I think what's the main difference about Metadata in the solutions we provide to the life sciences industry is that not only do we have applications that solve issues in clinical trials, that actually conduct trials and allow them to be done in a quick and easy manner, but we have a lot of data. We're sitting on a mountain of data around operational, clinical, and financial information that are really the differentiating factor in running a clinical trial, planning a clinical trial, and eventually executing it. Having that data to really know what you're looking at and how to do the next trial is, is game changing. So uh, there's a wide variety of customers, so anyone from the you know, top 30 pharma would be on our platform, all the way down to your small biotech uh, med device company startup, all the way to CROs, uh, our, our partners. Um, and they're using our platform in a number of different ways, um, both to conduct traditional clinical trials, but also to push the envelope and try and innovate and disrupt the way the clinical trials are designed from the very beginning. And so a lot of the things that we've been doing around digital mobile health uh, and are really starting to change the game and how that's done. And our clients have invested their time and effort into using a platform from Metadata that allows them to go there. I think that's, that's one of the main differentiators uh, in how our customers see us is we're, we're getting our job done today, but we're setting ourselves up for success in the future because it's, it's, it's cloud-based technology, right? So we're always pushing new updates and always changing and making the system better um, in an agile fashion. You know, it's, not, it's not static ever. Let's say the data points that we collect are, are pretty wide and pretty broad. So there's, there's data points from the sites themselves, from clinicians that are seeing patients in a clinic uh, that are reported by themselves in, in case report forms, in a more traditional manner. There's also e-source data that's coming in from, from labs, from patients directly, uh, from, in some cases, electronic medical records. There, there's a number of data points that are brought together, what we would call an integrated clinical record. And that's the real differentiator, to be able to bring that together and make sense of all that information at the subject level and tie it for different types of analysis. So the intersection of, of digital health engagement and the clinical data that we're, that we're collecting is, is getting closer every day. I, I believe that that's the real secret, is to be able to unlock that information and get closer to the patient. And as our customers are designing more patient-centric trials, this is becoming more apparent, where we have data coming in from the sites themselves, from clinicians, from patients themselves, from labs, from EMRs, from various systems that are coming together. To be able to, to, be able to put that together in a regulatory compliant manner at scale is something that has not really been done before, or it's been done in a very expensive, cost, costly, and uh, sort of a system that's, that's out of date the day you put it in, right? That's the on-premise world, that's the data warehouse world. What we're trying to do is really take over the big data of clinical and merge that with other types of information, like you said, for patient engagement. Um, and th that's only going get, to get bigger and wider, and we're seeing more solutions being ingested into the platform that bring more value, and that's just happening every day. So I think, I think the value prop of collecting a lot of this information and bringing it together is is around sort of understanding what's happening in the real world with these patients. So you have data that are collected from wearables, from sensors, things on your chest, things in your arm, um, as well as subjective data that, that actually can come in from an electronic diary or an app. How do you feel today? What's your pain on a scale of, of zero to 10 on a, on a VAS? Um, these types of information that are both subjective and objective are the key to understanding not only the types of data you're getting from the patient's body, but the context around why that's happening. So there are some trials we would see that, and the trials that we've done, that uh, you know, some patients would, would have unusually high step counts uh, in, in activity data 
from compared to the normal median of the trial. Turns out that person was a UPS driver, right? And that person really did walk 40,000 steps in a day all over the place. So the, the context of what are you doing, how are you doing it, and uh, around the objective data is just as important as the subjective data of how do you feel that maps to a, an outcome or an endpoint. And that's really the key, is, is bringing new endpoints to, to the table from data, from devices that send out data that you maybe couldn't get before. Um, or replacing procedures that are typically done in a clinical trial that would be considered the status quo and s either replacing it altogether or supplementing it with new data sets that actually bring a little bit more clarity into what's really going on that might have a completely different perspective on what that drug or treatment is doing to the patient. So we think the data unlocks a lot of that story and we're only now at the beginning really trying to figure it out um, at scale and our clients are, are testing that sort of to its limit at this point. So when we offer solutions to our clients, uh, we have a, an offering that's surrounded around mobile health. And the mobile health area is something that we struggled with in the beginning because of the amount of device companies that were out there and the different types of data that were coming from them. So we were trying to figure out a way to normalize all that information and have a wide variety of devices that we could offer but not having to deal with every individual device company. Because we're a software company, we want the data, but we're not, we don't have the time to really deal with the individual relationships of all the device companies. We have, for sure, and we, we, we continue to do so in some cases. But, it, but our clients really appreciate the fact to say, okay, we went from two devices to 175, and that uh, is valuable. So that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to, uh, that was one of the main challenges we were trying to solve um, with the various kinds of data coming in from different types of devices, both regulated and not regulated, FDA approved, not FDA approved, uh, we needed one place to go. So yes, we did actually look around to try and figure out what, what's the best solution for us. We looked at uh, other, other companies that, that had similar solutions. We looked at trying to do it ourselves. And uh, we found that partnering with a company that, that had the breadth of data, and when I say data, I mean like the access to data. So different types of APIs from a technical perspective really help us as a technology company to get at that information in a very robust way and always have new things coming online. Um, I actually met Validic back at Health 2.0 in 2013. That was the first time. This, we weren't really ready for any of that, but we had started to talk about it. And uh, lo and behold, two years later, we're finally, finally working together and it's, it's really helping us. It was a major milestone for us, for sure. So I could say with the Validic platform, uh, plugging it into Medidata's uh, ecosphere to ingest data. Without the Validic platform, it would probably take us a couple months to get a device up and running. Uh, with Validic, it's probably a couple weeks. So it, it, it definitely reduced the development time internally for us to just kind of get our stuff going. But to us, Validic is, is in many ways seamless to our clients. You guys are just sort of the secret sauce underneath that are helping us do what we do better um, and, and really help make that happen. So it helps us uh, bring a lower, lower total cost of ownership to, to our clients and ourselves um, to be able to get that data in quickly. So going forward, we're really following the lead of our clients uh, and they're sort of telling us in many ways what they're trying to do with a lot of these wearables and sensors. Um, we're, we're, we have a platform to ingest that information, integrate it with the clinical record, and put some good data science and good algorithms on top of that information that really unlock the true nature of why we're doing it in the first place. Um, I think just based on what our clients are telling us, uh, there's a number of indications and, and therapeutic areas of where this probably makes more sense. You know, there's, there's pain trials, there's uh, diabetes, there's CNS, uh, there are, uh, you know, cardiology, immunology, but even oncology in many ways. Um, I've been involved with a number of folks dealing with oncology clinical trials, using these types of information to, uh, like, measure sleep as a, as a marker for success in cancer patients with myeloma. And uh, they see that as if the treatment worked, you could sleep through the night, and we need a better way to track that type of information. And using some of these trackers um, are, I is a way to do that. And so we're seeing our clients telling us these stories and trying to put a, a value prop around using that information, but it really only unlocks the true value of it when you bring that information into a regulated clinical setting with good data science and analytics on top of all the information you're collecting from various sources. And so what we're trying to do is do that at scale and take a number of these biosensors, whether it's activity, sleep, stress, uh, ECGs, heart rate, heart rate variability. Uh, these types of things are all, can be used to identify these different biomarkers. Uh, and in essence, we're creating a digital biobank itself. We're amassing all this data underneath 
so that as time goes on, we'll be able to go back and maybe apply new algorithms uh, to data that we've had for years, similar to like a tissue bank would be used in oncology. You go back to the fridge and grab a new sample when you learn something new and you test it out and maybe you reveal something new. We think that the amassing amount of this M Health data from wearables, sensors, different devices uh, will, will follow the same path in a way. But when you approve treatments and get them to market, it won't be in the future just a pill or just a therapy. It'll be a smart pill or a drug with an app or a device that is a companion to it. And, and that really is the future of, of keeping people out of the hospital <laughs> and keeping them healthy, it, is using digital technology to transform the way that's done. I, I think the future of these digital patient solutions and the data that comes with it and as it translates to healthcare um, is all about getting the patient more involved in their own care from the very beginning. It, it's no surprise that around the world, uh, people are just not interested in these types of things unless they have a problem, unless they're sick, they have a chronic condition, or they're a data geek like me. Uh, and they want to just sort of amass that information so they can have it for the future. I think that the future is unlocking the power inside a, an electronic medical record and allowing patients to download their own data. And I know that there's an initiative that has to do with you know, everything here at this M Health Conference or with HIMSS or with a number of different uh, initiatives in the government in pharma, they're all talking about the same thing. In my mind, I would sum it up like this. If I can download my data, I can share my data. And if I can share my data, I can unlock a whole different world of possibilities that maybe I didn't know about myself and be able to contribute to a bigger ecosphere of data of where I might help somebody else find something that they weren't looking for either. So community, sort of like donate your data, understand kind of where you fit in that, in that big ecosphere and contribute. In my mind, the digitization of patient data is the future of healthcare, and all these things will be possible if we can do that. But you can't do anything until you can get at your data. And these, uh, these devices here are just the first start of that. One of the things I'm really excited about is, is trying to figure out what are the next sensors or wearables that go beyond the typical activity, sleep, heart rate. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting access to devices that can detect a lot more uh, types of data about a person that gets more disease specific. So you're seeing activity trackers that are being approved for Parkinson's disease and, and various uh, you know, patches on your chest that have uh, certain algorithms that go with it that are approved for different types of therapeutic indications. I think we're going to see more of that. And especially with the Validic ecosphere, I'm really excited to find out when those types of specific devices get into that data stream as well. Because right now, activity, sleep, heart rate, uh, blood pressure, those types of things are good, but we could, we could do a whole lot more. And from our clients, we're seeing a lot of requests for devices that are uh, not, not in the typical sphere uh, of devices, from wellness devices. So I'm really interested to find out from a clinical perspective how we can bring these two worlds together more closely to get at that data faster.